Hi, friends. Hi, guys. Don't judge me for my get up. Y'all know I get on here when it's early in the morning, sometimes or late at night, and your girl's hair is wrapped. She is still in her jammies. And this also comes with work from home life, too. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Still recovering from pneumonia. Um, but yeah, how are you guys doing? Happy Friday. Ah, uh, guys. Guys, it's Friday, but most importantly, it's still the month of July and God is still literally blowing his wind on things. He's moving things. So <laughs> y'all are going to hear some coughing in this word, uh, like the last few words, because still have that little cough in there. Um, but God is good because it's getting better. But I just wanted to come on here. I'm looking to the side because I have my notebook of notes here. Um, just from spending time with God in my quiet moments today, the last few days, and something clicked in me the last few days. Like I do pray. Um, I pray a lot. I, excuse me, hold on guys. I pray a lot. I talk to God a lot, but there's something about the type of prayer where you wake up you put on your praise and worship, instrumental, whatever type of praise of worship, and you just cry and pray. And for the first time in a long time, I did that on Wednesday morning. I just put on my praise and worship. Uh, I had the praise and worship instrumental going in the background and just setting the mood. And I sat on my living room carpet. I had my Bible. I had my notebook. And I just began to pray and worship and cry and cover you guys and cover everybody that I can think of to cover and cover myself. And there was something, I feel like a switch that switched on when I began to pray in that manner. And I feel like that's for all of us when we have that moment where we truly just dedicate that time to God. And I must have sat there for like 30 minutes or so just crying and praying and listening to this worship and crying and praying. It was just a repeat, but I felt so much lighter <laughs> that morning and just like starting that day. And that's something that I'm like, okay, for the next 30 days, I want to dedicate morning praise and worship time, right? And not to say I don't pray, I pray often throughout the day and so forth. But like I said, it's something about just dedicating, dedicated time to God, if that makes sense, just sitting there and that's all you're focused on is just prayer and worship. And I feel like it set the mood for that day. It set, it changed my heart posture, like my something just clicked. So that's something I'm dedicating <laughs> the next 30 days to is just waking up early morning before I start work and just getting back to spending that quality time with God in the morning where it's nothing but praise and worship music. You're letting the Holy Spirit fill the room and fill your heart and just crying and praying, no set time frame or anything, just really communing and sitting with God. Um, and I challenge you guys to do the same thing. And um, if God lays it on your heart to do this for the next 30 days, then do it. Uh, doing something for 30 days can make it a habit, right? So if that also resonates with you or something that God has been telling you to do, and again, it's not to say you don't pray, but it's literally intentionally setting that time apart in the morning, or maybe your prayer time will be at night. But for me, it's starting the day off right. You know, whatever comes my way, I've already set the foundation with God as the foundation of the day. So anything that builds on top of that foundation, I'm going to be okay because the foundation laid is God, right? And that's a foundation that can't be broken. It can't be uprooted. So I challenge you guys, uh, whoever this uh, resonates with for just, do it. Set time aside in the morning and just sit with God and commune with him and try it for the next 30 days and just watch how God begins to transform your life drastically. And I felt it. So yeah, I just felt led to share that with you guys <laughs> before I get into this word. Excuse me. Um, but this is going to be really short and to the point, but also a now word. Um, and what the Lord began to speak to me a couple days ago is that 
as he releases this veil, as the veil is released, the value increases. As the veil is released, the value increases. And what the Lord uh, means uh, by this, uh, oh Lord, help me get my thoughts together. It's early. What the Lord means when he says, um, when the veil is released, the value increases. He's saying that, let me get my, my notes together, guys. Hold on. There is a, there is moments of revelation and enlightenment uh, that's taking place. It's when God's divine truth and understanding is unveiled to us, right? So the concept of a veil being lifted is the, the is symbolic of a removal of barriers, which gives us a deeper insight um, on what the Lord has been doing behind the scenes. It gives us more spiritual awareness. And in this hour, the Lord is saying, when the veil is released, the value increases. Um, the promises will be seen, but the value has also increased, right? And for many of you guys, this also requires an expansion of your tent, okay? And for a lot of you, that will resonate because God has been telling you to make room, to expand your dwelling place, to, to get a bigger place. Some of you, it's a physical place, right? To move into a bigger apartment, a bigger home. Some of you guys, it's to get a bigger uh to, to, to grow your faith, to enlarge your faith for what he's about to do, right? So that is expanding your tent. It's enlarging your faith. Like you're believing him for this much and he's asking you to believe for this much, right? So expansion of your tent doesn't necessarily mean a physical expansion of moving into a bigger place or getting a bigger role at work or uh, growing your ministry. It could simply be God telling you to expand your faith to make room for for bigger faith for bigger possibilities for uh things that you never even thought of that God is about to do for you but you have to make room for these blessings in your life you have to have an increased faith you're you have to be ready for the limitless possibilities of God and what he's doing in your life right uh, so the Lord is saying, as this veil is being released, as he's removing the curtain, removing the, the um, confusion, removing these things out of your way so that you can finally see what he's actually been speaking to you about what he's doing and promising, as he removes these things, the value increases, right? And the Lord also began to speak to me about, um, and I don't want to jump all over the place. So let me actually just stay here for a second. Uh, Apostle Paul, before he was Paul, we know that he was Saul, right? And he was a murderer. He was murdering Christians. He was murdering God's people. But when God removed that veil, when that veil was lifted from over his eyes, the value increased, right? Right. He trusted the Lord on a whole different level. He gained clarity on a whole different level. He was transformed on a whole different level. So as that veil was released, the value increased. His value in so many different areas increased, right? He gained a deeper understanding of divine truth and his relationship with God, who God is in his life, right? Not who God was, because that's past tense. God was and still is today. So as the veil was released, the value increased in Apostle Paul's life in every area, in every aspect. And that is what God is doing in this hour. As he releases these veils and things begin to come together, marriages begin to come together, family dynamics get stronger. Uh, if you've been struggling for a long time and prom God has promised you financial blessings, as he releases the veil and all of these things begin to take place, just know as the veil is released, the value increases. Your faith in God is going to increase. Your relationship with God is going to increase. How you see God is going to increase. How you believe in God is going to 
to increase, how you um how you uh see his power is going to increase. Okay, so with this release comes increase. So it's not just increase as far as quantity wise. Yes, God is blessing his children quantity wise, and he's increasing finances and love and uh, gifts, ministry, so many things in your life, but it's not about quantity. It's not about quantity. Um, there's going to be an increase in purpose, an increase in prophetic understanding, an increase in spiritual growth. So it's not just about quantity, guys. And the Lord was speaking to me about uh, Kairos time, right? Kairos time. And Kairos is different from Kronos, right? They're both two Greek words that refer to time in two different concepts, right? Kronos refers to the chronological or sequential time, right? Time measured by clocks and calendars, minutes, right? Um, that's quantitative, right? That's quantitative. Anything that's quantitative is counted and measured in seconds, minutes, hours, days, et cetera right? It's measured by the quantity, the amount of something. That's chronos time, right? Based on a clock, based on the month, based on the day, right? But what God is doing right now for a lot of his children, it's the kairos time for these things to happen. Kairos refers to the right, critical, and opportune moment for God to do a thing. And it's not quantitative, it's qualitative, okay? And it's based on the quality and significance of that moment rather than the time frame, right? When God blesses, when it's God's Kairos moment, and I pray that this is get it coming across, because y'all know sometimes I have the hardest time with explaining things. Um, but what God is doing right now for many of his children, it's the Kairos time for those things to happen. You've been praying for years and just wanting it to happen when you wanted it to happen. Some of you have thought it was going to happen at a certain time. And when it didn't, it's like a big bite of your faith was taken away. You still believed God for what he said, but a big chunk of your faith diminished because you felt like God was telling you it was happening at this time and this was the day and this was the hour. And when it didn't, it took something away from you, right? And God tells us hope deferred makes the heart weak, right? Um, but a longing fulfilled is like a tree of life just planted by the waters that grows, right? Uh, and he tells us that for purpose, when we're waiting and hoping for something, the longer we wait, our heart just gets weaker and weaker for that thing. And some of us even start to not even want it anymore. And we just focus on God. We're just like, God, you promised this. I trust you, but it's been so long. I don't even want it, but I still want you. So I'm just, just give me, guide me in a different direction. But the thing is that God never forgets about something that he promised you that he's going to do. He does not forget it. If he spoke it, he's going to do it. He's not a God that will lie. So whatever he's spoken to you, he's never forgotten about it. It it never changed. Even though things after it, after that promise may have transpired that made it look like there was no way, or maybe God changed his mind or God doesn't change his mind. He just doesn't tell you everything, right? Uh, and we, we prophesy in part. Scripture tells us that we prophesy in part. When God is telling us, giving us a prophecy and telling us what he's going to do and what's to come. That's only a part of it. So what, how God chooses to bring that thing about or what happens uh, before that thing happens during that transition, during that journey, we don't get to see all of that. We're only given a little portion of what God is doing. So when something pops up that we didn't expect, sometimes we're like, oh, God changed his mind. No, God didn't change his mind. It was already scheduled and set that way. He just didn't tell you everything, right? And um, that's why I laugh at some people because like when God has me get on here and release dreams, I had a young lady and bless her poor little heart. Like she commented and- on one of my one of my prophetic words that I released, and she said, God doesn't change his mind. That dream was not from God. And I'm just like, girl, the the <laughs> worldly part of me was like, girl, shut up. Like you don't know what you're talking about. But so many people have that mindset when they're listening to a prophetic word and if they're not mature or where they need to be in Christ and 
you're you're saying God said this, but then this happened. They're like, God wouldn't change his mind to whatever you dream that wasn't from God. Your dreams come from two places. They come from God or they come from your flesh. They come from whatever's on the forefront of your heart, which is why he says the guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. Prophetic dreams, dreams are a gift from God. So you're either going to dream about what you think about all day long, the things you watch, the things you have your soul open up to. You're going to dream about those things if that's what's on the forefront of your heart, if that's what you're consumed with. But if God is on the forefront of your heart, whatever you dream, your visions, they're going to come from him. Satan does not give you dreams. Satan can only give you thoughts, okay? He can't even read your mind. So that, I'm not even going to get into that. But I'm just like, so many people... They're, they're so, uh, and I don't want to say immature when it comes to the word of God, but there's so much more to be known about his word and what his word says and what it means. And a lot of it just boils down to having a personal relationship with God, because the way God speaks to me is not going to be the same way he speaks to you. The way you understand things is not going to be the same way I understand things. But one thing is for sure, God's word always remains the same. And his word tells us we prophesy in part. There's nobody in scripture that Satan gave a dream to. Even the worst of the worst dreams, when God is telling Pharaoh, you're a dead man if you don't give that man his wife back and all these things, those were all dreams from God. Nobody in scripture had a dream from Satan. And if you bring up Job's friend who had a who describes this terror dream of the night, okay, that's a totally different story. Um, and all of Job's friends at the end of the day ended up being rebuked by God because what they were speaking on, they knew nothing about, right? If you read in Job, and I don't know what verse it is, but a lot of people feel like Satan gives you dreams because Job's friend speaks of a terror in the night, right? Who's to even say Job's friend was telling the truth when he was speaking of that dream? He was trying to give uh, context to why he was telling Job he's going through what he's going through. So he used this terror in the night description of a dream. But who's to say Job's friend even actually had a dream? Who's to say that's actually fact when at the end of the day, all of, friend, all of Job's friends were rebuked by God for speaking on things that they didn't even know about. So I laugh when I hear people say, oh, <laughs> Satan gave him that dream. Who's to say that that dream? And if you read uh, commentaries, even a lot of commentaries will say like, all of his friends were rebuked. So who's to say his friend actually had that dream? Who's to say he didn't make it up to make Job think, oh, God spoke to me in a dream and this is why you're going through what you're, you're going through. After all, every last, all of Job's friends were wrong. Job did nothing wrong to deserve what he was going through. And all of them were trying to tell him he did. And they were all rebuked at the end of the day. And Job had to pray for each and every one of them. So don't even use that as like an example of a dream that was given by Satan. That's not accurate, right? So anyways, not getting off topic, but God is saying, this is the Kairos time for what he's doing for many of you, right? This is not for everybody. A prophetic word is not for everybody, right? You are to take prophecies to God and sit with him and let him give you more on it. But the Kairos time refers to the right, critical and opportune moment. And again, it's based on qualitative rather than quantitative. Qualitative is the quality of something. It's the quality of something. When God blesses you with a promise, that quality is that quality of that thing that he's presenting you with, it's going to be A1, right? He's not looking, he's not giving you uh, or blessing you with things based on quantity. It's not the amount. It's not the amount. And I pray that I'm explaining this to you guys the way God gave it to me. It's not based on the amount. So you may have had to wait years, months, decades for this thing to come to pass, but the qu the quality of what God is blessing you with is going to be A1. God is concerned with the quality of things. He does not promise something and then delivers junk when it's time for that thing to come to pass. Name one promise, one blessing that God gave someone in scripture. And when he gave it, it was a piece of crap. None of it. He always gave something that had so much value 
the value, the quality of that thing was A1, okay? And that's the difference between Kronos and Kairos. Kronos, again, is quantitative and it's counted and measured by seconds, minutes, hours, days, whatever, right? It's it's based on uh, clock, calendar time, right? Um, it's used to describe, um, it's based on schedules. Let's just put it like that. But God's Kairos time refers to the right, critical, opportune time. It's the kind of time that's qualitative and significant, right? Qualitative is about the quality and significance of a moment rather than the duration, right? Opportune represents the right and appropriate time for something to happen, right? Um, example, the moment when a decision must be made, a breakthrough or a turning point, right? Kairos is used where timing is crucial, right? It's, it's timing is, it's example, Galatians 4.4, 4. but when the time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman born under the law. When the set time had fully come, guys, that's an example of Kairos time. The birth of Jesus wasn't based on Chronos time, months, days, hours, minutes. It was based on Kairos and it was qualitative. It was based on the quality of that thing. There was something that God needed his son to fulfill, right? So Jesus had to come at that right opportune time, right? He had, he had to come at the exact moment in order to fulfill what God was birthing him for, right? So I pray that this is making sense. So the Lord is saying that he's releasing the veil and with that release comes increase. And again, it's increase of your faith, increase when it comes to spiritual growth, revelation, when it comes to how you see him, there's going to be an increase in value. And again, that goes back to qualitative versus quantitative, quality versus time frame or amount, okay? So how you see God, how you see yourself, how you see this walk, how you see your calling, uh, all of that is going to increase. Yes, the blessing is coming with increase, but so many other areas will be increased with what God is doing in this hour, okay? So that is the word, guys. And I pray that this blesses who it's for. I pray that this <laughs> made sense for who it's for. Um, and yeah. Just allow God to do what he's doing. But for many of you, the Kairos time is now. And you're going to see why you had to wait so long for what God had promised you. But just remember, with this veil that's being released, there's an increase. And it's not just an increase in your blessings. It's an increase in so many different areas. There's going to be added value in so many different areas. It's not about quantity, it's about quality. God is not about quantity, he's about quality. When God delivers chef's kiss, it's A1. So I pray that this bus is who it's for. Um, that's all I'm gonna, gonna leave for this word. I could say so much more, but guys, so much is changing. I have testimonies coming for you guys as far as my ram in the bush moments and what God has done in my life. I'm actually moving next Saturday. I'm not going to tell you guys where, but God has definitely done a ram in the bush moment with me. And yeah, it's interesting. But my tent is being expanded and I'm excited for what's next. I'm excited to share this journey with you guys. Um, I've taken you guys along with me through so many different things. I'm not a person that waits until God blesses me to say, guys, guess what? You guys literally walk along with me. And that's how it should be. People should see what that journey looks like before you get to the destination. Not when you get there and want to praise God, but what that looks like throughout the journey. And I've literally shared that with you guys. And I don't regret that. I'm always going to be such an open book when it comes to my journey with God and this prophetic walk and this ministry and what he's called me to. 
I'm always going to share whatever he has me share with you guys, because that's important. You can't just share the testimonies. You have to share the tests that come before the testimonies, the, the, the journey, the whole journey, the, the, the quiet parts of the journey and the loud parts of the journey. So that's it for this word, guys. I love you. I hope you have a great Friday and we'll talk soon. Love you guys. Bye.